leave us again. That's a statement I made, y'all. He went to Lentz to make sure that there will be no more hiccups, no more glitches in our relationship with the Father. Either we're going to believe it, that God lives in us and we live in Him. We can't keep quoting scriptures about it. In Him we live and move and have our being. Sounds so deep, don't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's good we can quote it. But God wants to move it from theory Amen. to practice. Amen. Yeah. He don't want it just to be in our lips. He wants it to be in our lives. Amen. See, we hide behind our vocabulary. And our vocation doesn't exemplify what God wants to do on the inside of us. There's a work he wants to perfect that's concerning us. Trust me, y'all. Something he wants to do on the inside of us. And I've been fully persuaded that he's able to keep it against that day. But we got to make sure that we offer it to the Lord. So he can do something on the inside of us. Tell you that he wants to do it in you. Because he had not deviated from the plan at all. Let us make man in our image. We talked about that. He wants to make man in, our, in his image. You think he gave up on his hope. He, gonna, he, he, he swore by himself that the earth is going to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. You think he deviated from that? Every pulpit should interject that consistently. Glory filling the earth. Every message should be about glory filling the earth. Not the nebulous, not the terra firma, not the physical cosmos. I'm talking about the glory filling the earth. They call it the earthen vessels. The treasure that we have in this earthen vessels is the glory filling the earth. That should be our goal. That's a part of the incarnation. We can't relinquish. We can't be weary in well-doing. We gotta hold fast to the head. That should be that should be our anthem on the inside. It ain't just Christ in you, which is the hope. It's Christ through you. That's the glory. Christ being seen. Christ Christ being manifested in our life. That is the goal. To your neighbor, that's the goal. He ain't deviated. He haven't deviated. He haven't left it. He, Jesus is the blueprint for making sure that this is brought to fruition. You know, God is going to bring humanity to its ultimate destination. He haven't de de deviated from it at all. He wants to have an entity, an organism, organism, not an organization. We've settled before. We opted out. A, organ a living organism. Bone of his bone. Flesh of his flesh. In the earth now. Sure. But it takes us being challenged in our psyche, challenged in our thinking, being willing to step outside of our theological boxes. We got a lot of boxes, don't we? <laughs> you know? And most boxes let us know we are willing to die. Mm -hmm. When you don't grow up, when you don't be challenging your thinking, I'm telling you, that becomes your coffin. Mm -hmm. That box that you refuse to adapt. And let the Holy Spirit change your thinking. It's no longer a box. It becomes a coffin. Amen. And be fulfilled with let the dead bury the dead. But God has given us a blueprint for change. And the blueprint for change is that he sent his Holy Spirit to live in a people. And as we engage him internally. Away from the sense realm, away from what we, you know, the sight, you know, the five senses, the touch, taste, see, smell, and the other one, hear, which is probably the most important, right? Hear, say, or whatever. You got to tune in in the right channel. The best channel to tune into is learning to live from the spirit and communicating with him just like it was in the first uh, and Adam, he walked with them in the cool of the day. Uh, that day hasn't stopped. This is the day that the Lord has made them. That's the day that he has made so that we can commune with the Father. And that's why we have access to things that belongs to us as, as it relates to our inheritance. All right? Ugh, we can get this, man. We can get it in our belly and allow the Spirit of God to speak to us. We'll be all right. Jesus is the blueprint for what I'm saying. 
if God was in Christ, and he was, right? And his intent was to kind of reconfigure our thinking so that we can relate to God properly. And the goal of that is not to escape from earth. It was for heaven to make his manifestation in the earth. Well, I don't believe that. Well, you like the Lord's Prayer? <laughs> right? Don't you? Has no regard for your denominational proclivities, right? Our Father, mm -hmm. which is hot. Hallelujah, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, oh, y'all want to go Y'all go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Y'all sound so good. Come on, tell us. Give us a day. Forgive us our trespasses. And we forgive all our trespasses against us. Lead us not to temptation. For the rest of the world. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> That's it, all seven of those principles in there. Yes. Yeah. All seven. Larry Lee a long time ago did it for us in the early 90s. Marvelous work. Got to get this in our spirit. His will be done where? On earth. As it is what? In heaven. When we die? No. No. Now. How are we going to get it done? Through his spirit. Yeah. Right? Yes. And there's a witness, not only his spirit, but the two, there has to be two witnesses. The other witness is the word. Go to John 1, 14. The other witness is what? The word. The word. That's why the, Jesus is the, that's why Jesus said over and over, the witness is, part, is let me leave that alone. It's so important. We need that witness. Tell you never you need it too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so uh, we have to get it on the inside of us that Jesus, that we read, through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and his deity in John. It's the only chapter that speaks of his deity. The rest <coughs> addresses certain lineage in the earth. But John is a standalone book. It's not included in the synoptics, but it's a powerful, powerful word. Amen. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and, you know, all that stuff. So it lets us know that it's important. For, the word is important, right? Am I, am I, am I yes, sir. Everything is upheld by the Word, word, of right? yeah. word of his power. Everything's not upheld by your Bible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Yeah, I know. That, that's, that, go, that goes hard, don't it? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what you mean, Pastor? Well, uh, we're going to read it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. We'll fight. Some folks will fight you over that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your life. Can you say that things in your life is uphill? How much Bible you need to put up whole things in your life? Could it be that we have uh, what I call, in this a known term, biblical idolatry, which we have yes. idolized the Bible? Yes. I know I do. <laughs> You know, some of some of the people that have been with the church for a while is probably having a fit right now. It's just the truth, man. It's just the truth. Lighten up. Yeah, amen. It's the truth. Amen. The more accurate translation. What's the ac most accurate, accurate translation? First, we're going to say NIV and ASB and TLB. No, the most accurate translation is the word being worked in you, lived out. Amen. We'd rather thump the Bible than live the Bible. I mean, it Bible thumpers. It is written, but it is not written for us. Anyhow, let me get into this. So John 1.14 is a powerful prelude to what the incarnation came. It's a historical prelude. So when I, you know, it, it, it's, it's important for us to understand it. And so it's not just something that's transpired and is recorded in the annual of time. It is happening on a consistent basis. To every believer, it's supposed to happen. To your neighbor, every believer Amen. should experience what I'm going to say, what he's going to say. Yeah, John 1 and 14. I'm here to tell you, just like historically, Jesus walked the shores of Galilee. He was the embodiment of the eternal Christ. 
there will be a body that he has redeemed at the cross that shall present him once again in flesh. Yes, sir. It's going to be a people in the earth that's going to look like Jesus. Is that okay? Amen. Amen. I'm going to show you how that works. We're headed that way. The solution to the earth, that's why I'm teaching on Wednesdays, for those that don't come, is uh, an expectation of creation. <laughs> Earnest expectation of creation. Earnest expectation of creation is we're talking about the goal of all salvation, redemption, or whatever. Jesus' incarnation was to have a people in the earth that would bring deliverance to creation. And how does that start? Well, John 1.14 says, and what? And the word was made what? Flesh. flesh. Uh -huh. That's talking about Jesus. Jesus was made flesh. flesh. Amen. Right? How many right. know Jesus wasn't flesh? He was made. He was made flesh. Amen. How many know Jesus' name, as we said before, is not Jesus is his earthly name. Right. It was the name he got because it came through the matrix of the woman, Mary. It was a prophetic name. Mm -hmm. He will save his people from sin. But he come out of heaven. He stepped out of heaven mm -hmm. to become that propitiation, to become the door. Amen. You get what I'm saying? And his name before Jesus was the word. Mm 